Whoa, hello everybody. Well, I went on a binge watching Behind the Music. I got Paramount Plus for the month. You know, that's one that you kind of, you know, if you do subscribe, there's something on there you want to see. You don't really keep that one around. But since you have it for the month, you, you got to dive in and see what you got. And uh, I stumbled upon Behind the Music. I don't think I had probably seen an episode of this since the late 90s, maybe the early 2000s. They're calling it a Paramount Plus original somehow, when they, they definitely have episodes on there that are 26 years old or something. So I don't know how they get away with calling it an original, but <clears throat> it is definitely, it's a classic, really. And then some of the old, oh, some of the hits were on there, Leif Garrett, Shania Twain. They don't have the Jim Croce episode. That was one that I remember watching. I was like, I didn't even know who Jim Croce was at the time, I don't think. And they all have a film, you know, it's their best, too, if it's like an artist that kind of flamed out a little bit. Like the Shania Twain one wasn't great. She's like, yeah, sure, my career fizzled a little bit. You know, I was on top and it didn't last forever and, uh, you know. I'm out of the business kind of now, but I'm doing fine. Got this nice house, still looking good. No, those aren't the greatest episodes. You want a Leif Garrett episode, you know, one where, you know, he's like, I wanted to be the next Robert Plant, man. And then there's always, they always talk to someone who's like, oh, I knew. I knew the first time I saw that person that they were a star. And then there's the people that like got burned somewhere along the way. And they're like, they're, they're willingly a part of the show, but they're not real happy about any of this, including things that maybe Leif did in the past. Not a whole lot of that again with Shania. And Faith Hill on there is the the, the resident hater in that one. Um, so, uh, and then there was always, then there was the people that like met them kind of uh, maybe as they were going to try to take advantage of them a little bit. Now, in fact, they're still doing that by being a part of this show. Just some nobody manager or something, you know, some record producer, loser. <laughs> and um, so the Leif Garrett one is, that might be worth the one month subscription just to watch the Leif Garrett behind the music. <clears throat> and then there's other hits on there, like I said. Then there's a couple that I do not recall ever seeing. They're claiming it's like, like I said, it's they've kind of rebooted the show. They did like a DMX Pitbull. But who knows, man, maybe the Pitbull one is good. I would have never thought as a young man that Jim Croce would have been, would have been a cool episode. Linus Morissette, New Kids on the Block, um... Who was it? What were some other new ones? Oh, yeah. Then they had, like, Ice-T. That one might be okay. The actor, Ice-T, apparently. You know? It's been so long since he was even in music, really. Um, sure, they'll talk about the body count days. And uh, just so many great moments from all those episodes. So, yeah. I don't know. If you have Paramount Plus and that's hidden on there from you, you got to find that. And maybe, just maybe, it might be worth it for a month. Maybe. <clears throat> And then, oh yeah, Billy, last night as I was live streaming last night for members, the uh, the Walnut Creek show, Trey, I believe it was going on like while I was streaming that Trey joined Billy Joel on stage at the Garden. I don't think that counts as an appearance for Trey. I mean, maybe it counts as an appearance for Trey, but this doesn't anyhow affect the stats in the race to the top between Billy Joel and Fish. I feel like Billy's still in the lead, right? For most shows played at Madison Square Garden, I believe he's still in the lead. I know Fish was closing in at one point. I don't think so, though. You know, and it seems like Billy's just going to keep going and going. Although it seems like Fish is going to keep going and going. With the touring schedule they have right now, they probably can keep going, you know. Multiple shows in a city, multiple days off per week. They can do that for a while. And then, um, man, I saw more shots of the Dead & Company stuff. Um, seems like, uh, what is up with the crowd, really, though? You know, um... It just doesn't seem like, you know, I'm not expecting to see like a 1968 crowd where everybody just seems wiped out on acid and have to, there's some guy standing over here on the side naked, you know, I'm not really expecting that, but these just, I don't know, I did not expect to see what I saw. It's almost like people that are like high rolling, high rolling, high rollers in Vegas and they're like bringing a, I don't know, man, a woman they just met for the weekend or something. I don't know, it just doesn't look, it's down there, I'm sure, that, you know, I'm sure up in the nosebleeds, you got some hardcores up there. And then, you know, I saw that the, the uh, Spear Bong hit guy was reinstated, that's good, that's good news, good to hear. I don't know, um, <clears throat> seemed like a, I was sort of whole, I missed the whole thing, but uh, yeah, dude took a bong hit at the Sphere, somehow, I guess, between cameras, ticket purchases, things like this, they were like, you're out, banned for life, facial recognition will be used against you. I'd like to believe that Mike and Paige somehow got to the people at MSG and were like, you got to let him back in. You got to let the bong hit guy back. He's one of our biggest fans. 
And, uh, I mean, if you want to ban anybody, some of these people that I saw down there in the front of Dead & Company, I guess it was last weekend, maybe. Oh, man. They just, I mean, I'm sure they're nice people. They can do whatever they want, but that's just not what I expected. Maybe more so at the U2 shows. It did kind of look like the U2. Did, were people somehow putting, was this a deep fake in AI? It's like how we went from deep fakes to AI real quick, right? I mean, it's, it's the same thing, basically, kind of. Maybe not, really. I don't know. <laughs> We got some upcoming shows, you know, uh, channel members, um, Bob Weaver, we got 7998, we even got video for that one. Then we got June 17, 2012, July 31st, 97. A couple other shows, I believe, maybe one back in 91. We got a few, we got a few more, so um, look forward to those. Like I said, you got the video on YouTube of the July 9th, 1998 show. I forget where we were for June 17th, 12th. Um, same thing with the night. Oh, and the seven thirty one ninety seven. You know, it's not coming to me right now, but that was one where the date was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like recently, um, d uh, December twenty ninth ninety four, Bowie was brought up, and uh, I was like, oh yeah, I don't quite, I don't quite remember hearing that, but, or I mean, I don't quite remember what that sounds like, but the song and the date definitely checks out. Providence. All right, so, I don't know. I guess that's about all we got. And if you, um, yeah, oh, yeah, I got to get back out there on the grass seed. That's pretty much what's been occupying a lot of my time. There's some spot over here, situation with the fence and the neighbor. I don't know. I ended up with a big spot of a big long stretch, about two feet wide, 30 feet long or something, that needed seeded. I kind of felt like, you know, he should have done that maybe. You know, he's the one screwed up his fence and, in turn, screwing up my yard, but he's just like, nah, you can go ahead and seed that yourself, buddy. Sorry. Sorry about your mud strip. <laughs> All right, guys, boom. Weeds are already getting in there, too. It's unbelievable. I don't understand these weeds. They just grow and grow everywhere out of concrete. It's just like, he's got a bunch of rocks, too. He's like a rock guy. He's Mr. Landscaping over there. You know, he, like, lined his fence with rocks, you know. It look, looks nice. Hey, good for him, but, uh. You know, once he realized he screwed up and he had to redo the fence. A lot of rocks over here. That's a lot of rocks on my side, pal. All right, that's enough. Boom. I know you guys. I know you guys care about the neighbor situation. Still can't get the hummingbirds to eat, eat, drink from the hummingbird feeder. I don't know what I've done wrong. Maybe I didn't clean it properly. It did kind of just sit around all winter. Or perhaps it was dusty. I don't know. I should have washed it off or something. Hummingbirds hate it. All right, boom. We're out of here. Did I cover everything? We did. We covered Leif Garrett. That was big. Oh, yeah. What up, Kev? I even every now and then I see that in the comments, like here on YouTube or just somewhere in social media. Or uh, I imagine someone perhaps has even said that at a show. But a guy at Papa John's, I'm in there just waiting, picking up my food. You know, he was first. Took him quite a while to order. He was, uh, you know, not the kind of guy you expect to say what up, Kev, either. He's just an older guy. Just didn't seem, uh, nah, I don't know. I, I don't know. He just, like, didn't seem cool or hip or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know that you have to be necessarily to say that. So she gets done dealing with him. And she's like, yeah, can I help you? Do you ever carry out? And I was like, yeah, uh, order for Kevin. And as soon as I said that, he looked right at me. and was like, what up, Kev? And then it hit me like, oh, my God. So many people have said that to me. It must be like a fun thing to say. So many people have said that to me my whole life. Some people that know me, some people that like casuals, you know, work, school, just whatever it is. What up, Kev? I feel like I got a friend that still texts me. That's how he starts almost every text if we haven't spoken in a while or texted in a while, which is pretty much speaking now. Taco Monday tomorrow. It's going to be big. All right, that's it here. Oh, yeah, and then the guy at Meyer. I don't know what's going on with this guy, the door greeter. I don't know what we got going on. It could be a spectrum situation. He's a really nice kid. But uh, the other day, I'm following a guy in. This guy's a couple steps in front of me, um, walking slower than me. So I'm walking slow, trying to stay behind him. I mean, I don't want to be that guy that's breathing down his neck. Like, come on, man, let's get into Myers, get cat food, woo! But the greeter guy was like, uh, well, you know, what do you know? What the hell just happened there? We had a little hitch in the video. He was like, what do you know about Bob Marley? And I just instantly knew he wasn't talking to me because he's clocking this guy, you know. Ten steps away, he was already eyeballing us. Mainly the other guy, though. Zeroed in on his hat. The guy had on a hat. <clears throat> kind of Bob Marley hat. And the guy was a little startled and taken me. He's like, what was that? You know? And at this time, I'm passing by. And he says it again. Well, you know about Bob Marley. 
And I wanted to kind of hang back and hear exactly the conversation go down. By the time I was leaving, it was all over. It was everybody was gone. I saw this kid another time, the greeter kid. He kind of had wandered away from his responsibilities as a greeter. So I'm like on this one side over here walking back towards the cat food, I imagine. And he was kind of over on the other side. They got like chips and pops and barbecue sauce and all this stuff out in the middle of the aisle. And uh, he kind of wanders over to the soft drinks. And I'm like, he's going to crack one of them open and drink out of it, isn't he? What's he doing over there? He's supposed to be a greeter. You know, I don't want to be a narc. I want to tell on this kid. But it seemed like he had uh, forgotten about his responsibility as a greeter. He got a little thirsty and was like, you know, I know where I can get something to drink. Maybe I'm totally way off by saying that. I don't know, possibly, but yeah, you know, I don't think so. I think I, I think I know what was going on. Worked with a guy for one of my first jobs, fast food chicken place. My first job, not one of them, the first job. One guy worked there. He was an older guy. He was probably only in his twenties, but he seemed real old to us when we were like sixteen. He would go from behind the the, the heater or whatever. You know, you'd cook the chicken, you put it in the thing, and people would order chicken. They'd take it out of the little heater there, not an oven, but uh. You know, just where it was the heater thing. I don't know what the hell that thing's called. Where you store the chicken after you cook it before it goes to the people. The chicken, the middleman, the chicken middleman. So anyhow, this guy, you could go in from the front and the back. You know, if you were serving, if you were working the desk or whatever out front with the people, the chicken people, people that like to eat chicken, they, uh, you would take, that's not anything racist. That's not what I'm saying there. I'm just trying to be funny, you know. Not implying anything with these people and chicken, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not at all. You know, um, this was in Vandalia, Ohio. Everybody was white. This one guy, very white and very old. He loved fried chicken. Anyways, uh, so you, he would. Did anyways? This guy Terry would come around the back. This 20 year old old guy. He would go around the back of the not oven chicken holder thing. The middleman. He would take chicken legs off the tray and eat them, and then throw them underneath the thing. And we'd. For a couple of weeks there, we were like, man, there's always a shortage. You'll be like, hey, did somebody get all legs? Did somebody, where's all the legs? You guys dishing out legs? What's going on? It's supposed to be equal. And then someday, finally, should have done it nightly. Tells you we weren't really up, we weren't really keeping up on the cleaning. And uh, finally pushed those suckers. They were on wheels. It was like 14 chicken leg bones under there. Guy had been sniping them, Terry. I think he had quit by then, too. He didn't work there long. Probably got sick of the chicken. But I found another place. He was like, man, I'm going down to Taco Bell. I like their food better. Terry. I know his last name. I ain't going to say it. You never know. Saw Terry years later. Me and, me and my friend that were both working there with Terry, the chicken man. We saw him. He, he acted like he didn't know us. But he was like, oh, I bet you those guys know. They found out, didn't they? After I quit that chicken place all those years ago, I bet you they found them bones. That's how Rex Ewerman felt. <laughs> so this guy was a look he had in his face. Same look a serial killer has when they've been had. This guy probably, this guy probably hit every fast food joint in town, eating all their food, throwing it under the oven thing. <laughs> Post oven heater, warmer upper. Keep it warm. You know what I'm talking about? The chicken middleman thing. Boom, we're out of here. I love you guys. If you made it 13 and a half minutes, good. Thank you.